What's up guys and welcome to episode 2 of this Canopy Fit Out project. It's a rainy old day in Perth at the moment so I thought it was the perfect opportunity to jump back in the garage and continue work on this setup. So in episode 1 we installed the Bushman 85 litre upright fridge freezer combo into the Canopy setup which I'm absolutely loving. Um, but at the moment it has no power and a fridge is no good with no power. So in today's episode we're going to be installing the entire 12 volt setup from scratch which I am super excited about. I've always been pretty passionate about installing electrical systems, whether that's just by popping a set of spotties in the car or doing a full setup like we're going to be doing today. So I imagine this is going to be a probably a two day job. There's a lot of stuff to go into this setup. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited. So let's jump across to the bench and I'll show you all the stuff that's going in this setup. So my plan is to do a pretty straightforward electrical setup in this canopy, but even the more simple setups still require a lot of bits and pieces. So the heart of this whole setup is going to be my iTech World lithium battery, of course. This is the one I had in the Ranger, but of course I had to take it out and uh, bring it across to this new setup because it is such an awesome powerhouse and should run all our accessories with no dramas whatsoever. To charge that battery, we've got the iTech World 40 amp DC DC charger again, same one from the Ranger, which is awesome. 40 amp being the bigger of their two DC DC chargers, so this should charge that battery in no time. To get power from the main battery into the canopy to run the charger and then charge the lithium battery, I might have gone a little bit overkill, but I've bought 100 amp uh, twin sheath cable. So this stuff is uh, more than up to the task of uh, getting plenty of power into that DC DC charger. Being a 40 amp, you do have to use relatively thick wiring, but this should well and truly be overkill, which is always the way you wanna go. Um, I have bought two packs of it as well. One pack is five meters and it might just be enough, but it's just one of those things. If I bought one pack, I'd need a second pack, but now that I bought two, I'll probably get away with just the one. As for running fuses in that cable, obviously you need two, one at the main battery end and then one at this battery end. So I bought these two uh, jumbo fuse holders. These are rated to 60 amp, which is plenty because the DC DC charger is 40 amp. And then of course I bought two compatible fuses to go in those holders as well. Again, one at each end. As for running power within the canopy, once we've got it to the battery, I just bought some 15 amp cable, uh, Nava again, just from Super Cheap Auto, and that should be more than up to the task of running lights, USB charge sockets, and other small appliances like that. I'm gonna be distributing power within the canopy with just one of these uh, little fuse boxes. I actually bought this years ago with the plans to install it in the Ranger canopy, but never got around to it. Pretty cool little unit. It wasn't an expensive one at all, but it should get the job done. Basically, just run your mains power feed in here. Then you can uh, plug fuses in and use any of those 10 outlets on the side. It's uh, really cool, actually. It's got these red lights that when your fuse blows, they light up to let you know which fuse is blown. So pretty cool, looking forward to getting that installed and making sure everything is fused correctly. I'll also be running the iTech World lithium battery monitor or battery gauge, whatever you want to call it, uh, just as a way of keeping an eye on that battery level. Um, now I was thinking of running power into the canopy using this Anderson power inlet. Again, it's actually the same one I used to use on the old Rangers canopy. But, I mean, this new canopy already has a nice flush power inlet that MRT installed for the central locking system. It's currently definitely not up to spec for running this uh, caliber of cable through the canopy wall. But I'm thinking about rewiring it and customizing it a little bit so it can withstand this cable. And that way I've only got one plug to connect to uh, disconnect the canopy. Um, so that's my current plan for that. I've also bought some conduit to make my wiring a little bit neater. And that's pretty much all the stuff for the electrical system, aside from building new headboards to mount all this stuff. So I've just bought some 3mm MDF, two sheets of this to make two headboards for the canopy, one on each side. That way I can just take off one panel at a time to access the wiring behind. And then of course, to make them look a little bit nicer, I've bought some marine carpet, uh, again, just from Bunnings. This is literally the same type of carpet I used to have in the Rangers canopy. So a bit of nostalgia there, bringing a bit of the old setup into to the new setup, I guess, as well as the battery and a few other bits and pieces. Anyway, the first job is gonna to be to connect this nice mains power cable from the main battery and get it run back into the canopy.
So I've started this 12 volt install by removing pieces instead of adding them, which seems wrong. So I have pulled out the factory wiring kit for that central locking system in the canopy. And the reason I pulled that out was to make way for my very own version of the same thing, just, uh, just using that nice thick 100 amp cable. So that's going to be more than enough to power that 40 amp DC DC charger, which is great. And it's going to mean there's only one cable I'm disconnecting and reconnecting when I remove the canopy setup on the back. So the next step is going to be connecting this to the main battery and running it all the way back to the canopy as neatly as possible. Then I'll have to wire an Anderson plug in on the end of this cable so I can plug it into the canopy. And then there's just some slight modifications I'll have to make to the power inlet from the inside of the canopy so it can facilitate that 100 amp cable. It is a brand new day, but we're back in the garage to continue work on this 12 volt system. We've now got our 100 amp cable running all the way from the main battery back to the canopy, through a fuse and then under the body of the car. I've really taken my time to make sure I cable tie all that wiring up nice and high and out of the way of any sticks or rocks or other things that flick up while you're forward driving. It enters the canopy here in the same spot as before, but through a brand new Anderson connection, going back into that flush mount Anderson uh, inlet. On the other side, I have made a few changes to the other end of things. So this is the standard central locking module and normally the wiring would come in and it would connect to here to uh, give power to the central locking system. Now my big thick 100 amp power cable comes through here and it shoots off to where eventually will be my DC DC charger, then to the battery, then to the fuse box and then I'll run some new wiring back through to that central locking system. So my next plan is going to be to try and run all the wiring to where I'll need it to be eventually for my different accessories and also get a couple of headboards made up for the setup. Okay, stage two is complete, which has taken a little bit longer than expected, but I'm really just trying to take my time and get everything perfect with this setup. I want it to be done right and last us for many years to come. So if you take a look in here, it looks a little bit of a mess at the moment, I know, but all that wiring is in place and running roughly where it needs to go. I've also penciled up on the headboard there the location for my fuse box and DC DC charger. So the battery is going to live in behind that fridge eventually and that's where all those wires are going to run back to. So the next stage is going to be to get those uh, two headboards built so I can actually screw those things like DC DC charger, fuse box, switches and all that in place. I'm still waiting for a few things to come from eBay. So I'm going to leave it here for today at least. Pretty happy with the progress made and it's, uh, it's coming along nicely. All the tedious stuff's out of the way now and then the rest of the stuff is kind of the fun job. Okay, so a few days have passed since we installed all that spaghetti up on the headboard of the canopy and in that time I've received a lot of deliveries from Amazon and eBay. It's been like Christmas. We've now got a couple of switch panels for the headboard to control all these accessories. I've got a uh, USB outlet panel with six uh, quick charge USB ports, which is going to be so handy for me. Uh, I've bought two rolls of LED strip lighting. Uh, two rolls because one is just plain white colour and one is amber that's supposed to help deter bugs and insects. So that's going to be uh, really interesting to see if that actually works. And I've also bought a bunch of fuses for that fuse box. So it's always good to have a, a bunch of spares too. So I am pretty sure that's all the pieces I'm gonna to need to complete this install. The next step is gonna to be to knock up those headboards, carpet them up and attach them to the canopy. So there's somewhere to attach all these accessories.
Okay, so I've got my headboard panels all cut down to size and they fit really nicely in the canopy. The next step is gonna to be to attach some carpet to them. So for that, I'm literally just gonna lay these panels down on this carpet that I prepared earlier. Just some marine carpet I bought from Bunnings. Then I'll take my trusty chalk marker and draw a line about an inch around the outside of the panels. Then I'll cut the carpet out to size, um, use my Selly's Quick Grip Contact Adhesive to stick that carpet to the back of the panels. This stuff's really good for sticking carpet pretty much anywhere. Uh, and once that's stuck, I'll fold the excess around the back and then staple it to keep it in place. So straight. <laughs> As you can see, my headboard panels are finished and I am so happy with how they've turned out. That Selly's contact adhesive has worked really well and the carpet is all stuck down nice and tight, which is fantastic. I've also carpeted these little 12 volt control boxes that I built as well. Really happy with how they've turned out too. They've got some cutouts pre-made for my little switch panels. So on the driver's side, we have a little two switch panel there. And on the passenger side, we have a four switch panel, which goes just in there. Everything fits nice and perfectly. The next step is gonna to be to work out exactly where I want my fuse box to be mounted on this headboard and also my DC-DC charger as well. I'll get those screwed down, get the wires poked through the back and then get these installed in the canopy. It is currently 11.32 p.m., very late. I'm absolutely exhausted, but the 12 volt setup is completely finished. Um, everything's working, everything is uh, looking super, super neat. I'm absolutely stoked with the result, but I'm also very, very tired. So I'm gonna put all my tools away, get a good night's sleep, and I'll give you guys the full tour tomorrow morning. So after a few really long days and even longer nights, the new 12 volt setup is fully installed and working a treat. It did take a bit longer to finish than I was expecting, which seems to be a running theme of this canopy fit out. But I mean, I'm not a professional, so a lot of this stuff I was figuring out as I went along. I was trying not to cut any corners and just get everything done to the best of my ability. Anyway, let me give you a tour of the new setup. So starting from the top, we've got the 40 amp iTech Weld DC-DC charger to take care of charging that lithium battery. Got it mounted nice and high, and yeah, being the 40 amp model, this should charge that battery nice and quick. All the cabling is run behind this headboard, so from there, 
runs down there behind the headboard, comes out there and goes to the battery mounted behind the fridge. Now the battery is of course the iTech World 120X 120 amp hour lithium battery. To mount it, I've basically just put it on this uh, nice thick anti-vibration matting to keep it nice and safe on corrugated roads. And then I've strapped it down to the canopy floor with these really strong tie down points, one at the front, one at the back, and then a ratchet strap over the top. That power is then distributed through the canopy through this fuse box I've got mounted up on the headboard here. This is a really cool piece of gear actually. It's got 10 different outlets. Obviously I'm only using five at the moment, but when a fuse blows, it has these little uh, signal lights to show you which fuse has blown. Just takes a lot of the guesswork out of solving problems out on the tracks. The last piece of the puzzle for the driver's side of the canopy is this little control box I've made up here. Now this houses a 12 volt outlet and also two switches. I've also run nice thick cabling to that 12 volt outlet, so if we ever wanted to run a dedicated freezer on this side of the canopy, I've tried to provision enough room in this space here for that, and that socket's going to provide more than enough power. Uh, the outside switch runs the white lighting inside the canopy and the second switch runs the amber lighting. That way, if we're ever camping somewhere where there's a lot of insects, which seems to be pretty much everywhere you go camping, and we want to access this drawer, we can just flash up that amber lighting and not be bombarded by insects. Anyway, that's pretty much everything from this uh, control side of the canopy. Let's jump around to the fun side. Moving around to the main side of the canopy, I've got a little control box module I've built up to house pretty much everything I'll be using regularly while out camping. So up on top, we've got a four switch panel. These first three switches all operate lights. So the first switch operates the white lights outside. The second switch operates the white lights inside and the third switch operates the amber lights inside and outside. The adhesive backing on that LED strip lighting really let me down and it just wouldn't stick to this uh, matte black finish on the canopy doors. So to try and solve that problem, I have put a few uh, blobs of super glue along the light strips and I've sticky taped them in place for now. So fingers crossed they stay put once I remove that tape. So moving along my switch panel, the fourth switch operates a USB power outlet panel down below. This panel gives me six USB outlets, which I am so keen for. I've been making do using just two in the old setup for literally years. So very, very happy to have some more outlets, uh, including one quick charge for USB-C outlet as well. So I've got a laptop and also a tablet that both charge off USB-C. So it's gonna be awesome to be able to charge those in the canopy without needing an inverter. So moving down to the bottom of this panel, we find the iTech World Lithium Battery Voltmeter so I can uh, keep an eye on my battery and make sure I'm not draining it with all those USB outlets. And of course, my fridge now has power too. I've run it back to that fuse box and I can finally start using it. And with that, my 12 volt setup, which is probably the most time consuming part of a canopy fit out is officially complete. Well, I say complete, but I find 12 volt systems are one of those things you're just constantly chopping and changing and refining as you go along. But I'm quite happy with this as a V1. It ticks all the boxes for me and it turned out pretty much exactly like I had planned, which is always a good sign. So I hope you guys are enjoying this canopy build series. There's a whole lot more still to come. I'm thinking the uh, slide out kitchen build will probably be the next episode because my, uh, my draw runners arrived last week and they are super heavy duty and I'm very keen to start that build. So thank you so much for watching. Leave any questions you guys have in the comment section down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can and I'll catch you guys in the next one.